How's it going everyone, College Lefty, and in this video we're going to be quickly going over a glimpse of the ninth inning conquest as well as 150 a program henchmen. So let's quickly get into it. So in a previous video, I talked a little bit about the ranked seasons reward that I thought we were going to get. I also made my ninth inning boss predictions for this upcoming program released in a couple of days. We have a glimpse at one of the cards that will be listed at 150 program stars within the ninth inning, and it's Gold Glove center fielder Steve Finley. And if you've ever used a Steve Finley card in MLB The Show, then you know that this card will play above his attributes. If we take a look at his attributes, they're pretty good all around. Uh, lower contact against lefties and 90 contact against right with solid power against both sides. But the thing about this card is that he's an all-around balanced player, right? He has great defense and speed, but his swing is the most glitchy part about that card. He has a quick swing, very similar to, uh, you know, the short two-handed swing like Roberto Alomar, like Alberto Mondesi, like a few of those guys. And we also have a sneak peek of the ninth inning conquest map. And this map looks pretty cool. It's in the shape of a helicopter, obviously. And uh, I don't know if you can see there, you're kind of starting off uh, to the left of the Reds, I guess to the to the upper left of the Reds stronghold. And honestly, I think that the only turn-based mission we might have is to conquer the Reds stronghold within, you know, one or two turns. We can just go straight for it and attack it. There might be no turn-based missions at all. Uh, the only other one I could think of is maybe the Cardinals on or before, you know, turn three or four, something like that, as far as turn base missions go. But I'm going to go ahead and hop into this event. I matched up with another Twitch streamer as well. Uh, I can't even really call myself a Twitch streamer as of lately. I haven't been streaming. I've been really busy with work. I actually got off work and was able to play this game. I wanted to take you guys through some of the highlights, but also I'll go ahead and link his channel in the description and the comment section down below so that way you can give him a follow i think he's just starting out he has you know 120 something followers and he's been streaming every other day or so so definitely check out his content here he's gonna smack a home run with the brand new hanley ramirez so that was nice to see that card in action as soon as i threw that pitch i knew it was gone i mean a sinker low and inside we miss over the middle of the plate and he hits a perfect perfect now we're facing tatis and tatis is going deep up and in fastball not the best feedback on the pitch. It was still pretty close to where I wanted it, though. Uh, just much easier of a hit chance in order to send that one deep. And the opponent did not miss it. That was a no-doubter. Smashed with 125 power. But here in Byron Buxton's very first at-bat, I hit a home run with him. A no-doubter. And this is the same exact thing that happened with the face of the franchise, Byron Buxton. Very first at-bat, I hit a no-doubter. The only difference was that the other opponent... Uh, quit right away and that was it for the game this one we're going to go ahead and tie it up with back-to-back -back homers I was kind of surprised though to start this game off with with two solo shots I mean the very first two swings I take on the game I haven't played in a couple days I've been really inconsistent with my gameplay but I've been having you know a good time giving you guys information and kind of just making what videos I can with the time I have we go back to back to back to start this one off, Tatis is going deep. First home run I've hit with him on the squad. I only tried him out for one ranked seasons game, and uh, that was a shortened one as well. That one lasted only like three or four innings. But uh, anyway, Babe Ruth sends one up the middle. We have an at-bat here with Robinson Cano. I haven't used this Robinson Cano in quite some time. You know, I've used a few different second basemen out there, and he's back in the lineup. We got a pitch right down the middle. That was a cutter. Didn't miss it. Send it out for a perfect, perfect two-run shot. And that's really the thing about this event is that it is on all-star. You know, you're going to have to put up a good amount of runs. And I started off with the five spot in the first inning, which is great. But I really need to continue to score and hit like this because I have a feeling that this guy is going to be able to put some good swings together and score a few more runs as well. We also have to keep in mind that we're playing this event on all-star. We have six inning games, so we kind of have to, you know, adjust our strategy a little bit in that way. I mean, I'm just hanging pitches over the middle here he squares it up luckily that one wasn't sent out uh for the most part though you know it's gonna take me a little bit to get warmed up on the pitching side i usually struggle with pitching anyway and just not doing it for a little bit or not playing the the game as much working on pitching i mean i'm just laying them in there if you notice the feedback here uh, it's a lot of bad pitches early late uh just late very good and it's still not going exactly where i want it here we got a good pitch and we strike out the pitcher he's just looking to take that strike three um, still threw a couple balls though in that at bat 
Anyway, he's one swing in the bat from tying it up. Had an interesting play earlier. And we hang a curveball here. Luckily, he didn't send it out. Might have been a little bit early on that one. I noticed that uh, with Walter Johnson, I can kind of get away with some pitches over the middle of the plate. Because he throws so hard and he has that off speed to kind of throw him off. If they're sitting on a fastball, I can bring in that changeup or that curveball. I just wish that he had a fifth pitch. Another thing about this card is that he has a really long motion. So that can throw off the hitter at the plate to where he's swinging at pitches outside the zone. I felt like I was able to get him to chase a few pitches. I mean, I wasn't even intentionally throwing him way out of the strike zone. But I was able to get him to chase a few um, maybe because of his motion. But so far, you know, I do want to try out some of these brand new cards. I have Byron Buxton in the lineup. I'm also going to be using um, Garrett Crochet in this one as well. That left-handed reliever, the Tops Now version that we just got recently. I'm going to be trying to bring him in. Now that we have the lead, I'm looking to bring him in first out of the bullpen. And really, even if he gives it up, I'm just trying to see, you know, how that pitcher is going to play. Uh, what's his motion like? Is he effective? And now he, the opponent got a two-out rally going here. We're trying to get out of this inning. 102 fastball from Walter Johnson. And then I'm going to be bringing in a 102 fastball from Garrett Crochet as well. So I'm definitely excited about that pitcher. I, I really want to use him right now. But at the same time, um, I do want to get as many innings as I can out of Walter Johnson. Because the first time I used Walter Johnson, it was like an, an inning-long game. And then his stamina was destroyed. I couldn't... I couldn't use him again. I wanted to sell him. Uh, it was just it only made sense with the way the program was set up at that time. But now that I picked him up again, I can use him in this event. You know, I can use a variety of these players: Nick Castellanos, Fernando Tatis, a few guys where I've only played one game with them. And uh, I think this event's pretty cool all around. But anyway, we're going up against Rogers Hornsby. This opponent also has Lou Gehrig. If you notice from the uh, Pre-game loading screen, he had Lou Gehrig and it's completed, you know, Moments Extreme, Conquest Extreme, and Showdown Extreme, which is pretty impressive. That, you know, takes a lot of time and a lot of focus in order to do that. I have not attempted anything since I made my previous video on Moments Extreme, though. So I've just been, you know, focusing on work and then playing a couple online games when I can here and there and making videos out of it. So a lot of people ask me, you know, wow, you really square up the ball every time when you're making these videos well not necessarily i mean so far in this video you've seen me take a few bad swings you've seen a, a few bad at bats here you're going to see another one right here look at lou gehrig though running this one down it's kind of hunched over that was kind of interesting but uh rogers hornsby's up this might be the worst at bat of all time just to a spoiler alert this might be the worst one but i i thought we had some interesting plays here uh check swing you know just barely out of the reach of henley ramirez lou gehrig was running uh, hunched over i'm not even sure if that's how he runs it's just something that i noticed but uh yeah we end up popping out lead off double and now we have two outs with stan musial up chase another bad one just sometimes i do that you know i get the lead early i have some really good swings early on i'm swinging at good pitches over the middle or at least pitches that i'm looking to hit and then i just start chasing i start to think i can hit everything and start to play bad and now we still only have five runs fifth inning it's only five to two this opponent can make the comeback at any time. And here we have Garrett Crochet into pitch. Luckily getting away with this one. Fastball up and away. That one caught way too much of the plate. I'm trying to go back to it though. He seemed like he was chasing that pitch a little bit. And when we have a lefty, after using a righty, that can kind of mess up the eye level of the hitter. Depending on if he's using strike zone, if he's using uh, the different camera angles in the game. We can kind of use that fastball up and away to tunnel the uh, off-speed pitches as well but anyway um aside from that byron buxton is absolutely incredible this card i don't know what it is about this dude it has to be the way his swing is because this card is insane i mean people are still using the face of the franchise buxton and doing well with him he has like 60 contact and 60 power if you have this one the tops now one with 80 something and 100 He's going to play way above that. It's almost like he's uh, he's like Babe Ruth up there. I don't know. It's only the first game, but he has two home runs. And I know this event's on All-Star. I'm just making a joke with Babe Ruth. But uh, I really do expect that Byron Buxton to play uh, really well on the higher difficulties. Uh, Hall of Fame, legend, just the fact that he has 99 speed. Um, you know, get a base hit, it turns into a double or triple. Uh, his defense is elite. And as long as you can kind of square up the ball with a smaller PCI, or you know a lower contact attribute some something that's not in the 100s or 115s 
uh, then you might be all right with you might be all right with Byron Buxton. He is a, definitely a good card. He got the player of the game in this one, and we were able to close out the victory with Garrett Crochet, and he actually got the win. So not bad for a couple of debuts there. Also follow um, Sinjanity over on Twitch. Check out his live stream. I was kind of watching his VOD from a couple days ago. Pretty cool dude. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video. I'm College Lefty. See you in the next one. Peace out.